So now that you've seen the OnePlus 5, how does it compare to the competition? It's a spec showdown. So how does the quote, flagship killer compare to the competition? Let's look at the numbers. Kicking off with the processing package, the OnePlus 5 joins a growing list of handsets that pack the Snapdragon 835 system in a chip. Boasting an energy efficient octa-core Cryo 280 CPU and 25% faster Adreno 540 GPU, these phones offer up extra performance and battery life over the last year's flagships. The same cutting edge specifications can't be said for OnePlus 5's display though, which sticks with the same 1080p resolution as the company's previous models. At 5.5 inches, the most discerning eyes will probably have preferred a Quad HD 2560 by 1440 resolution, but 1080p is by no means a poor choice if it helps you save on power consumption and most importantly, price. Seriously though guys, it's a 5.5 inch screen. Can you really discern the difference between 1080p and QHD? And if so, do you value that QHD over better battery life? And if so, go outside and get a dog. Oh my goodness, I've never been happier. <laughs> now the use of an AMOLED panel will certainly lend to some vibrant colors, and Gorilla Glass 5 offers up some additional protection from scratches and breaks. However, if you're after future-proofing HDR-capable displays and a slightly sharper resolution, the Galaxy S8 and the LG G6 hold an advantage here. As for memory, the OnePlus 5 is aiming to separate itself from the competition with the inclusion of a minimum 6GB of RAM and 64GB of UFC flash, up to a whopping 8GB of RAM with the 128 flash storage option. The OnePlus 5 isn't the first phone to feature such a huge pool of RAM. The title belongs to the Zenfone AR, and we are skeptical that this much RAM has any meaningful improvement on the device performance whatsoever. Why, you ask? Well, it's my understanding because most programs are not designed to utilize that much RAM. Go ask Gary, he'll tell you more. In terms of camera capabilities, this is an area where the OnePlus 5 is really aiming to compete. The handset offers up a 16 and 20 megapixel dual camera combination for improved low light performance, along with a two time optical zoom capability that so far has only been seen inside the iPhone 7 Plus and the new Oppo R11. Of course, we won't comment on actual quality before we can see a side by side shootout. Now, DAS Charge, aka Oppo's VOOC fast charging, makes a return, which is paired with a large 3300 milliamp hour battery to keep the handset juiced up all day. Fast charging and large cell sizes are common in this form factor, but DAS Charge has proven to be one of the fastest and cooler charging solutions around. However, the use of a proprietary connector might make finding a replacement a pain in the butt, and third-party accessory support, such as power banks, will be more limited than more universally adopted standards like Qualcomm's Quick Charge. The OnePlus 5 also includes NFC, HD Bluetooth audio streaming, a USB Type-C connector, while retaining the 3.5 millimeter headphone jack, and a fingerprint scanner built into the home button, all of which we've come to expect from top tier devices. Other more expensive models do include some additional extra features though, such as more advanced mobile payment options, wireless charging, and modular accessories. Now the HTC U11 and the Galaxy S8 and the LG G6 all include an IP rating for water and dust resistance, but the OnePlus 5 does not. Neither do many other top tier models from last year, but it is becoming an increasingly popular feature this year. Similarly, the OnePlus 5 arrives sans wireless charging capabilities, with the Galaxy S8 and LG G6 being the only two flagships offering this feature right out of the box. However, many customers will be willing to forgo those extras to save a dollar. Now let's talk about price, and you're looking at anywhere from $479 to $539 US. Now that is a reasonably priced device considering all that you're getting. Now I would have preferred that they had foregone some of those extra features and made it even cheaper, but hey, compared to the S8, it's a bargain, right? So what do you guys think? My question is, I really wanna know how OnePlus is gonna try and tackle the marketing and distribution challenge. Because this is a great deal. If people like my mother-in-law, people like her, knew more about OnePlus, they would jump on this. 
but it's harder for them to get these phones unless they're gonna go on eBay and buy these phones. I mean, you can't easily go buy a OnePlus device at a store here like you can buy an iPhone or a Samsung device. It's harder to do. And if they could solve that distribution or marketing problem, you could make a massive dent here in the West. What do you think? Let me know down there or right there.